Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome, fellow deplorables. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos radio show. That may sound odd to those of you watching it on television. You'd say, wait a minute, he just said radio show. But that's how we started out. I mean, you know, the show's been on for, I guess, more than a dozen years, and it started off as a radio show. But thanks to AU and TV Network, we, of course, are um, now a television show as well but we still call ourselves the radio show. It's just to keep you on your toes, that's all. But anyhow, I'm George Landreth, and I am one of your Conservative Commandos hosts today. I'm coming to you from the Conservative, the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network and television network, or I guess AU and TV network. And I am very fortunate to be joined as with, well, my co-host today is a good friend, and you, you don't need an introduction, you know her, Melissa Isaac. She's an attorney from Alabama, and... Uh, you always have to appreciate somebody who uh, has the ability to see through the fog. And uh, I don't know what her actual eyesight is, but something tells me she can see through fog very clearly. And that's why we're glad she's here. But, well, the Army tells me I still have 20-20 vision. But I tell you what, there's a lot of fog right now. So it, it's a gift for any of us to be able to look through the fog. There's a bunch yeah, of it. That's right. There is. And so I'm glad that you're here to help me because uh, with the debate that... Uh, you know, earlier this week, there's all kinds of uh, fog in the air, but lots to discuss, and perhaps we should jump on to that uh, uh, now. Um, I assume you had a chance to watch the debate. What are your sen- What was your sense of it? Maybe just overall first. Let's start with the general, and then we'll get specific. You know, overall, I think the biggest criticism of the presidential debate was they were interrupting each other and there was too much name calling back and forth. So I didn't really get that here. Uh, there was a little bit of let me finish my sentence or a little, a little bit of talking over the moderator, which I think was to be expected. Overall, you know, my biggest thing is I even made a post during the debate saying, you know, I think it should be illegal. It should be a crime to lie in a presidential or vice presidential debate. And of course, my social media kind of blew up on both sides of the fence because here we have two people talking and and I, and I think, you know, I caught more mistruths on the side of, you know, uh, of, of, of Camilla Harris. I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's not true. That's, we know that to be false. We know that not to be true. So I think by the end, I do think P- President Pence did a good job. I would applaud him. Yeah. And I was disappointed in, um, in, you know, Camilla Harris. I think that she gave a a good presentation at times at other times I don't think her her snarky looks I don't think the rolling of the eyes I don't think that helped her at all but I think overall it was a a win for Vice President Pence I would agree with all of that Um, one of the things that frustrated me about the debate was um, well at this point the whole they're good people on both sides that that canard in Charlottesville Um, Mm -hmm. if you say that and then use that as your reasoning for why you don't want to support President Trump, then you're either one of the most misinformed people on the planet, meaning that you're like drooling dumb. I don't even know how your brain generates enough energy to tell your heart to beat if you're that dumb. Let's be honest. I mean, that has been so debunked that even Jake Tapper says it's false. And all you have to do, you don't have to do any research. Just watch the preceding 30 seconds and the succeeding 30 seconds where he says there's good people on both sides. And he makes it very clear to you. He, he says, and by the way, I'm not talking about those evil, you know, blah, blah, blah. and he goes on and talks about how much uh, white supremacists are bad people. And equivocally says that. So it's just kind of like, I'm sorry, um, Kamala Harris. And I, I have to be honest, I, if I had been him, I probably would have said, said to the American public, I, I thought he dressed it well. But I would have added, you need to understand something, people. This woman just told you something that even she knows is a lie. And she told yeah. it to you because she's so cynical and dis- has such disrespect for you that she thought you might not know and that she yeah. could perpetrate something she knows is a falsehood. And you could say, and the funny thing is, this isn't the first time because she accused yeah. Joe Biden of being a racist in the debates. And then when she was asked just this week, she laughed for like, you know, 20 seconds mostly. It didn't really respond other than the interspersed laughter with the word, it was a debate. It was a debate. In other words, what she was saying was, I'm allowed to lie in debates. Don't hold me accountable for what I said. And that was evident tonight from her. And I, I think I would have made that case clear because um, she is a fantastical liar. And so is, not, and so is quite frankly, the, Joe Biden. I mean, I... Joe, I find it amazing that they're telling us Joe Biden's a healer. Joe yes. Biden, the guy who's responsible for a new verb in the American lexicon when it comes to Supreme Court nominations, to bork. 
the verb, <laughs> to bork. Who was the committee chairman? Joe Biden. Mr. Joe Unifier. Biden. Right. Okay. Um, and then um, who was the committee chairman when Clarence Thomas? Again. Oh, he, he, he chaired that witch hunt. He yeah, sure did. That's right. Joe Biden. The Unifier, Joe Biden. Yes. And then who's the guy that told a predominantly black audience during the 2012 election? They want to put you all back in chains in that kind of goofy dialect that he was trying to mimic, whatever it was he was trying to sound like. I don't know exactly, but it wasn't his regular voice. Yeah. Again, oh, that's interesting, Joe. So Mitt Romney, with all of his warts and faults as we see them now, he wanted to put black people back in chains. Okay. Him and, okay, gotcha. Yeah, he's a unifier. I mean, if there's somebody who can kind of lift the dialogue and we can get past partisanship, he's the guy. And it's just like, I get so tired of this just silly canard. And I, I feel like with her, that's all we got was these kind of silly canards. You know, she acted indignant, like, you act like we want to get rid of fracking. It's like, uh, because we have you on video saying so because dozens of times. Exactly. I'm sorry for that we took you at your word, but you know, or, yeah. or things like, um, we won't raise taxes on anybody who makes less than $400,000. No, you said you're going to get rid of the the Trump tax cuts, which yep. lowered taxes on people down, you know, at the lower income levels as well. So, I mean, I just, yep. but, but she acted indignant. And so at some point, the only critique I have with the vice president, and I thought the vice president did a very good job. So I don't mean this as a criticism. I might have actually pointed out, this woman will say anything in a debate. She told you that when she said, oh, I was a debate. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, that was an embarrassing snippet. First of all, she looked childish, just giggling for like 20 seconds, interspersing the word it was a debate a few times. It's like, that's not an answer. Get real. You're running for vice president. And because of the who the president is, the nominee, you're actually running for president. Let's be honest. You know, yeah. And, and what, what I liked, and President Trump did this and President Pence did this tonight, is they have 47 years worth of failures of Joe Biden to bring in the table. They have a overwhelming, overwhelming proof of incidences and stories of, of you know, uh, Kamala Harris as the attorney general in California, where she fought against really bringing proof forward that would let people, innocent people out of prison. So this woman who is so, you know, she's embracing justice and the American way and what's best for people. That's not what she did at all when she was attorney general. And right. she had a lot of power as attorney general to try to turn things around and say, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm, you know, I'm going to side with the people. She didn't do that one time. The thing about this debate and this election in general is it's so politically charged that it's, it's more of a visceral reaction to the other political opponent. And it's not so much facts. I mean, I can look at my social media feed. I've got Republicans, I've got Democrats. And they'll say, you know, get him, slam. Yeah, you know, don't let him talk over you. They're not even listening to the facts. They just want the fight because it's visceral right now. It's not about, yeah. wait a minute, is so are they really telling the truth? Because to sit and listen to this and actually to do your homework, you know, the conservatives, you know, this is the first time, Georgia, I've really seen the conservatives like kind of rise up and ball their fists and say enough, like we've had enough. So after this debate, I think Vice President Pence did good, but I think the conservatives are still saying hit her with more, hit her with more, because there's so yeah. much to, to refute the, the, the lies and there's so much to right. refute the untruth. And that's kind of what the people are craving right now. No, you make a very good point. I think there's a lot of people that are frustrated about being lied about. I mean, for example, it's not just Trump they call a racist. Basically, if you're going to vote for the president, then you're a racist. Yeah. I've been told that before. Sure. That voting you're conservative. For Right. Yeah. And, um, and I don't have a racist bone in my body. I'm not a racist. I hate racism. And I, I hate it politically. I hate it religiously. I have a variety of reasons that all tell me racism is wrong. And, uh, and so to have someone tell me I'm a racist because it's just like, I'm sorry, you don't even know me. So, you know, I, sit down and shut up kind of thing. I'm sorry. But, but uh, it's just, I think there's that sense of I've been maligned so much that part of it is it's personal now. When you see, yeah. it used to be that if somebody said something bad about the president, whoever the president was then, it wasn't quite as personal. You might be, see them as your guy or the, you know whatever, but, but, but now they actually have done a pretty good job of connecting uh, the president's supporters to him. Unwittingly, I think they have 
created a problem for themselves because mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example. Well, maybe I should just, and I'll tell you an interesting story. My mother, who's in her late seventies, was at a um, kind of like a sine wave locally at the local shopping center near her home. And, uh, and she was um, a, a, I was going to use the word gentleman, but I should, a male. He was not a gentleman. And I won't even call him a man because no man would do this. He's a sissy. So a sissy um, went up and uh, pushed her to the ground, knocked her oh. down. There happened to be police nearby. They were uh, at the shopping center, just kind of, you know, on a patrol. And so they came by and he was arrested for uh, disorderly conduct or assault or whatever it was, you know, some minor thing. I mean, he didn't kill her. But my point is, what kind of human being do you have to be to go push down a 70-some-year-old woman? I'm trying to figure out what that person would have to be doing before I could bring myself to do that. Mm -hmm. Disagreeing with me would not be enough under any circumstances. Under any circumstances. Yeah. That's right. You know, uh, I just, I, I can't imagine it. But this is what the left has become. Oh, absolutely. It is justified. So that they're, they're right now, so, you know, I've, I've heard of them targeting white businesses, targeting white business owners and saying, and the, the justification is, is because of the racial inequality that they are justified in doing this because this is the only way that they can get justice. It makes no sense whatsoever, but there's this, they truly believe it. And yeah, they resorted to that. And you've got people who know better who are using them as pawns to go out there. They're stacking bricks outside of, of buildings so that they can be thrown. This it's, it's all they're, they're using. They're using these people who think that they are victims of society. And they're yeah. not. And I'll say this as an attorney too. You know, I'm, I'm specifically I'm a men's rights attorney, so I see the injustice in the court system. I'm not here to sit here and say, oh my gosh, our courts are wonderful, they're great. I believe in that justice prevails in every case because I can tell you it does not. But rioting and looting and pushing down old women in the street is not going to solve the problem. The problem lies with right our courts. Our courts need reform. I'm mm -hmm. sure that they're. Some of the police need reform. I mean, we can be real about this. We don't need to be tearing up our neighborhoods in the process. Yeah. All that's doing is causing a bigger divide. And with the left condoning this, we, we haven't seen Camilla Harris and Joe Biden until they're forced to, until they're, until they're asked directly. They're not out there telling people to stand down. They're justifying the behavior. So you're right. Yeah. Here we are. This is what the left has become. Absolutely. Well, we're up against a break, uh, Melissa, and sometimes it's a cruel taskmaster, but I will just remind our viewers and listeners, we're the conservative commandos. I'm George Landreth. She's Melissa Isaac, and we are coming to you from the conservative commandos radio network, which is broadcast all across this great nation on the AUN TV network as well. And of course, if you're not near one of the many broadcast towers, never fear because Al Gore's amazing internet also carries us. And you can find us there at iHeartRadio, TalkStream Live, you name it, we're there. Also our own website, ccrshow.com. Don't go away. Melissa and I'll be right back. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. 
Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get DISH. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with DISH TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to DISH now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get DISH TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show, carried in the AUN TV network, the Conservative Commandos radio network, and everywhere else in the world except maybe not China and North Korea and Iran, because I think their governments would probably not approve of our programming, because they're not big on freedom there. But we are. We truly are everywhere except for those places. I'm George Landreth, and my co-host today, Melissa Isaac, is here as well. Um, you will notice that um, she's the more articulate, pretty one, and I'm kind of the, you know, well, we won't get into that. But at any rate, this is the place to be. I'm glad you're with us. I do want to remind you, if you'd like to get a rebroadcast of our show, just go to our website, ccrshow.com. It's all there. And of course, you can always like us and friend us and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Just look for Conservative Commandos. Um before we shift gears, Melissa, I thought maybe it would be worthwhile to ask what you thought of the segment where the vice president asked Senator Harris, do you plan to pack the court? What did you think yeah. of her answer? Well, or non-answer? <laughs> yeah, her lack of answer. And this isn't the first time that she's failed to respond or the, the uh, Vice President Biden has failed to respond. So that's a really good question. I think at some point the American public is going to see their lack of response and infer a negative and say, you know what, this can't be a good thing. The fact that they're not answering the question, that cannot be good. So mm -hmm. no, and she was asked very directly, and I think Vice President Pence did a very good job pointing out she's not answering. Just for the record, he even said, for the record, she's not answering made it very clear, and she sat there and, and with a stoic look on her face, uh, almost as though she was proud that she didn't answer the question. So yeah, I think the yeah. American people are gonna take that and say, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and infer that that's a bad thing for us. Right, yeah, it's, there seems to be a certain contempt for the American public in a lot of what she has to say. And um, and that's would probably be exhibit A, you know, in that, yes. to, at least as I see it, it just kind of like, wow. It's a, it's a legitimate issue. I mean, I understand if someone asks you some crazy off the wall question or, you know, something like that, you might just go roll your eyes and say, I'm not going to dignify that. Asking someone if they're for the plan to pack the courts, since they've been talking about packing, packing the court now for several months, um, doesn't strike me as a crazy issue. Refusal to answer it is very revealing and I think very troubling. But anyhow, um, I wonder how much longer they'll get away with it. I suspect the mainstream press may allow them to get away with it because they don't seem to hold their feet to the fire. The president, for example, has answered the question on white supremacy dozens of times, literally dozens of times, and they still act like he's dodging the question. So, um, and they, and then they do the exact reverse with her. She dodges the question and they pretend she's answered it. So it's amazing to me. I mean, it just, the, the level of duplicity is beyond the pale, but 
you know, we're often told that um, the president is way behind the polls. Some polls claim he's behind by as much as, I think, 13 points, which is kind of absurd. That's silly. Um, but I saw uh, some information that suggested that uh, some of these uh, polls are, you know, not correct. And, um, and, it, and it has to do with the weighting of how they represent uh, uh, Democrats. And they've historically started using uh, a Democrat percentage that is similar to the one in 2008, which is the high water mark. If you recall, um, it was a very historic election, the first opportunity to elect a black president. And we had a relatively, um, a relatively, I think, ineffective kind of, you know, ha candidate. And I you don't have to get in. I'm not trying to malign. He's passed away. I'm not trying to malign uh, Senator um, McCain. I'm just saying, you know, he suspended his campaign in late September, early October, things like that, that just kind of didn't look like he was quite ready for prime time. And it was reflected in the polls because there was a point at which it looked like he could win. And then it kind of went away. And for a lot of conservatives, I'm told, uh, uh, they basically voted for him because of his vice presidential pick, not so much because of him. You right. know, so my point is um, that but they use that as their model. In other words, an historically weak election for Republicans for a variety of reasons, some of history, some yep. of the peculiarities of the candidates and, and other economic circumstances. Also, you'd been after eight years of a Republican administration. So generally speaking, the other side is more jazz than you are. That's why it's often hard. It was unusual when, for example, Ronald Reagan effectively got a third term. And the, he, the only reason he didn't get a fourth term is, he, is unfortunately, his vice president convinced everyone he wasn't going to be the fourth term. <laughs> so they're like, okay, well, fine. If he's not going to be the fourth term, we'll go with someone else. You know, but, but bottom line is it's unusual. You know, uh, Clinton didn't get a fourth term. Bush didn't get a fourth term, or excuse me, third term. And so, the, you know, bottom line is um, they use as that as their model. So let's talk a little bit about what that might mean with the polling, because when you use the wrong model, the problem is you're only calling, you know, between 1,500 and 2,000 people. And, and it's not just, it's not truly random. People think they just pick 2,000 numbers out of the phone book. They actually pick a certain number from every state, a certain of that 2,000, a certain number of people that fit certain demographics, that live in certain areas. They actually have a set aside for we're going to call this many Republicans, we're going to call this many Democrats, this many undecideds, or what they think historically would be that. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you look at the polls when it comes to Trump. I think we all know you can't rely on polls. If you look at where he was in, you know, 20 in 2016 at this time with Hillary Clinton, he was also upside down. You know, I think at this at this point in the election in 2016, he was around 11 to 14 points down this exact same time. So it's really hard to say. You really can't look at the polls. And they know they're using flawed, um, you know, flawed polling strategies. They know this. And one thing that I really like about the polls as it relates to social media is you can read the comments. So you have a poll and it shows, you know, Biden in the lead by 11 points. And you go to the comments and there's not one pro-Biden comment in there. People are saying, I don't know who they're talking to. No one's called my house or no one's called anybody that I know. So you you know, the problem is, is that, you know, some people still look at these polls and some people give credibility to the polls, maybe. But really, mm -hmm. I think all in all, people know that the news now, they don't trust the news. People don't trust people who, who are doing the polling. People don't trust people who are giving us the news. So, you know, I think at this point, you know, they can flood us. They're flooding us with false information and they have been for a long time. But we're all to the point where we shake our head and say, yeah, that's just, just more fake news, just more fake news coming our way. Yeah, you make a very good point that we've kind of learned not to trust them. Um, you know, I, I remember when Brexit was supposed to go down yeah. uh, and it was supposed to fail by, you know, five or six percentage points. It actually won by three or four. So it was a swing of somewhere around eight points, roughly. And I remember saying to myself, um, when I saw it was still really close, I thought it's probably going to pass because the opposition argued that the only possible reason for being for Brexit was that you were a xenophobe. And you are, you know, mm -hmm. dark hearted, hateful person, as opposed to maybe you're a Brit who is pretty proud of the fact that you are one of the oldest 
continuous, uh, you know, de democracies in the world, and that you have this constitutional system in your, you know, it's worked well for your country, and uh, you'd kind of like to preserve it and not turn everything over to a bunch of bureaucrats from Brussels. That's a possibility too, but that's not how it was portrayed. The press basically said, oh, no, 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 you're a xenophobe. And uh, so people just started lying. And we saw the same thing with Trump. I remember I actually predicted Trump would win, and I wasn't sure about that a month or two out. But when we got to, I would say, maybe 10 days out, I remember saying to myself, this reminds me of Brexit. This reminds me of Brexit, because the only good reason, according to the New York Times, according to CBS, NBC, to vote for Donald Trump is you're a xenophobe. You're a bad person. That means right at the bat, people are just going to go, never mind. Who are you voting for? I'm not going to. And I, to me, it's a very revealing because one of the questions now that's more helpful is don't ask people who they're going to vote for. Ask them, who do you think most of your neighbors will vote for? And that gives the, that tends to give Donald Trump a big victory because then they're not they're basically not being asked. Are you a, they're being asked, are most of your neighbors racist? Oh, yeah, sure they are. <laughs> you know, I mean, not actually, but you know what I mean. It's just funny. Um, so I, I, I think that as a conservative, we ought not get too down in the mouth about where things are headed. I don't think there's any conservatives, none that I know of, that are really afraid of polling, of, of Trump even being down in the polls. You know, the only time that I really see groups of people, you know, holding Biden signs is on TV, is on what the media is giving us. But you look at like, look at these Trump boat parades that are going on everywhere. There's Trump parades everywhere. You go, you know, in almost every city, even these Democratic cities, and there's Trump signs everywhere. There's people doing things for Trump. So, you know, I look at what, what am I seeing that's not being fed to me by the media? I'm seeing everything being pro-Trump. There's Biden signs here and there, but largely, overwhelmingly, it's Trump. Now, I live in Alabama, which is a Republican state, but I work in the city of Montgomery, which is, is it's a Democratic city. And mm -hmm. there's just as much Trump paraphernalia as there is for Biden. So, no, I don't think any of us are really relying on the polls. I think at this point, you know, we're, we're used to being this fed a narrative by the media. That's for sure. <laughs> it's, you know, it's crazy. Well, and it may be why we don't get angry, but I'll, you know, I've seen the left get angry when they get, they're confronted with facts they don't like. I'll, maybe I'll give my theory on that when we come back because we're up against the clock. But just to our listeners and our viewers, this is the conservative commandos. She is my good friend, your good friend, conservative's good friend, Melissa Isaac, and I am George Landreth. And we, of course, will be right back. Don't forget our website, ccrshow.com. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. Oh, I'm so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions.
questions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the television show, the radio show. Thanks to AUN TV Network, the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We truly are everywhere. As I said, maybe exception. I'm not sure we're on Mars yet, but we're working on it. And I'm, I kind of suspect that it, unless you've got some, uh, some ability to get past the uh, the government's uh, limits on your ability on the internet, that you're pro we probably can't find the Conservative Commandos in China either. But you know. We're about everywhere else. And uh, I'm George Landis, one of your hosts today. She is Melissa Isaac. And of course, she is also one of the Conservative Commandos hosts. She's one of our regular hosts, one of the champions of conservatism and freedom. And so uh, I'm glad to be able to share the, uh, the microphone with her, the, uh, the opportunity to talk about what's been happening. Just want to remind you, if you want to rebroadcast, go to our website, ccrshow.com. It's all, all there. Um, before the break, I kind of made the comment of uh, how the left seems to get really angry, and I kind of wanted to just explain my theory. If you're a conservative your entire life, beginning in elementary school, you are exposed to the idea that there are people in positions of authority and power over you who don't agree with you. And so you learn to kind of accept the fact that, you know, yeah, okay, I, not everyone agrees with me, it's okay, um, I'll do my best to convince them, but whatever. Um, but for the left, I think you can live in a bubble if you're on the left. You know, you can tune in to um, whatever you you know, NPR or MSNBC or whatever you want to you know whatever you want to watch, and you can avoid talking to people. And we now live in a politically correct world, so that people can be like, no, 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 I have a right to not be confronted with ideas with which I disagree. You know, that's what the left would say. And so I think they get angry because it's never really occurred to them. When something challenges them or pushes them, it's like, <gasps> you're pushing my buttons. No, I'm just not agreeing with you. I'm not actually trying to start a fight. You said X. I don't agree with that. I'm saying no, I'm not X. We can have a discussion about that, right? You know, no, we can't actually. Because, you know, speech is violence or something crazy like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think for a long time, too, conservatives were shamed. So especially if, if you know, if, on, on social media, for instance, if you made a comment and then you were attacked, or do you just say, wow, I'm just not going to comment anymore? Well, we're not doing that anymore. We're hanging in there and saying, look, you, you know, I won't be shamed. I won't be shamed into silence. Yeah. But you're right. I think for a long time we became used to it. And we're just, you know, we have this sort of this idea to, you know, well, we can agree to disagree, which is not something the left is able to do. But now conservatives are digging their heels in and saying, I'm not going to be shamed anymore. I'm going to have my opinions. I'm going to express my opinions. Well, and I think it's important. This kind of takes us to our next topic, um, which is this concept of, you know, on the left, so many people were saying things like, I hope they die, uh, referring to the president and uh, the first lady. And, uh, and it wasn't just like lunatics. I understand that you know, the left and the right, I'm not responsible for every, you know, high school, you know, sophomore, you know, sitting in his mom and dad's basement, uh, you know, on social mm -hmm. media has to say. I, 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 so I don't have to respond to all that. But these aren't just, I mean, you have Jane Fonda, who's a spokesperson or a surrogate for Biden. You have um, Hillary Clinton's former uh, spokesperson of her campaign. You have some pretty high level people 
who probably ought to be able to do, you ought to be able to expect a little better out of them than that, saying things like, I hope they die. You know, they deserve this, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, you got to be kidding me. I, I'm shocked by that because yeah. nobody deserves to die from COVID. You know, yeah. it's just, I, I don't understand what makes people want to say, um, you know, I hope these people have bad things happen to them. It's just, you got, you have to be in a pretty dark place. Well, you look at Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you yeah. know, she just passed away recently and I was not a fan of a lot of her opinions. And she, right. you know, she believes that a, a woman should have this unfettered right to choose, especially as a, as a men's rights attorney. I do not, especially when it comes to the issue of children. I think yeah. men need more um, voice when it comes to children. But nonetheless, I still recognize the fact that number one, she's a human being. Number two, you know, she has made some contributions. She has made some good contributions. But you know, I'm, I, on my on my business page, or right? I gave I gave her credit. I mean, I, I don't wish death on anyone. But that goes yeah. back to right. You can't disagree with somebody, right? If you're on the left. Um, you can't dis you can't disagree. Period. If something bad mm. happens to them, it's something that is celebrated. We shouldn't celebrate that. We're all still human beings. You know, I have a lot of friends who are Democrats, and we'll sit down and we have conversations. And the ones that are able to sit and truly have a conversation, we actually agree on ninety ninety five percent of things. Okay, I'm pro life. They're pro choice. We're both anti murder. The things are seen differently. So there are some differences there. But overall, you know, really, we all care about the same things that we should, right? We right. care about quality of life. We care about being able to feed our families. We care about, we should care about intact families. But that's the problem is that Democrats, that even some of the Democrats I'm friends with, they can't even relate to this new left, this new extreme left that is coming out. But, you know, we, we can't even sit down and have civil conversations anymore. You know, thank goodness I still have some Democrats in my life I can do that with. Right. But some of these Democrats are so far left. I mean, they don't even watch you walking down their street. Yeah, no, you're right. It's um, like I said, I think, um, you know, I just don't understand what could cause you to go push down um, a woman in her 70s. Or for that matter, in her 30s. I'm trying to figure out what, what causes you because you don't like the political sign they have. You know, it's, it's not like the sign said death to you personally. And if, if they, someone was holding a sign that said, please kill George Landreth, I'm still not going to go push him down. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, yeah. It's just, it's kind of weird to me. I don't understand the idea that um, people are, it's just, it's bizarre to me. And I think it's dangerous. And I would argue that this is the history of the left. If you understand how the Bolsheviks did things, if you understand how the Nazis did things, if you understand how the fascists in Italy did things, then you begin to understand this is all part of the left's plan to regularize violence and to excuse it, to say, in our case, it's okay, it's justified. We had to. And you saw that in, quite frankly, in the, in the riots. We were told that if we didn't approve of the riots, it was a sign of our own racism. So burning the, things down, being against yeah. burning things down makes you racist. But the problem with that is that the media didn't always show us, but we had a lot of black business owners outside saying, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? You're destroying my whole life. You're destroying everything yeah. that I've In some built. cases, it was a white person carrying the torch of the Molotov cocktail, and yeah. it was a black business owner. And, but us you opposing know, that, us opposing white people burning their businesses makes us a racist. And it's kind of like... You know what I... Mean? Okay. A big, a big problem is we have Antifa, which in really, in my opinion, is just a probably a bunch of just entitled white kids who surface from their parents' basements and are out there wreaking havoc. They don't go in their neighborhoods, right? They go to someone else's neighborhood, yeah. destroy it, wreak havoc, and then at the end of the day when they get hungry and need a sandwich, they go back to their mom's house, right, and go back in the basement and crawl in their little hole. So that was so frustrating as you have these this white Antifa largely, okay, they're funded by Soros, who knows, who knows where they're getting funded, but someone is funding them and they're going into the black neighborhoods and they're they're riling everything up. Like I said, literally stacking bricks on, on street corners where they know there's gonna be protests, right? Hopefully that they turn into riots. So yeah, no, I mean, you wanna talk about Black Lives Matter? I'm not really sure how any of this has turned into truly how black lives truly matter. 
Yeah, it's it is. Uh, I think just kind of sickening when you watch um, the misuse of language. Because I think any human being will tell you. Um, I'm not talking about the organization. I'm just talking about the question, do black lives matter? Of course they do. Of course. Yeah, that's like, that's a no-brainer. I mean, you know, life matters because we are, as I see it at least, we are creations of a loving Heavenly Father. Uh, we are all God's children. And so our lives matter. And um, it doesn't matter what color your skin is or what color your hair is or any of those. That's kind of, irre that's not kind of irrelevant. It's entirely irrelevant. I have seven children. Some are blonde. Some have dark hair like me. Well, not as much gray, but you know. <laughs> but anyway, but the bottom line is um, none of that matters to me. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, and I, I know for a fact that God does not care about the level of melanin in our skin. Just doesn't care. Uh, we're his children. And, um, but on some level, they've taken that true principle. Uh, and then applied it in a way that makes it anti-family. I would argue in many cases anti-black. It's very strange to me. But then again, I would argue choice is important. I think that, uh, you know, and that word gets misused. I, yes. I believe that our founding fathers were pro-choice, not pro-choice on abortion, but they believed that individuals should be able to make choices in their own life to determine their future. But they drew the line when you were affecting other people's lives. I think women absolutely, if they have a, a bad kidney and they want that kidney removed or get a kidney transplant, I want no part in making that decision for them because mm -hmm. it's their body. But I'm not quite convinced the baby's their body. You know, it's kind of a little harder for me to accept that. It seems like it's a separate human. I understand I'm a male and I don't have to carry a baby. I understand that. I gotcha. I can't solve that problem for people. You know, that's just kind of, <laughs> that was oh, a... Well, no, but, but George, the problem can be solved. Listen, you women out there, if you don't want to get pregnant, you know what not to do, right? Yeah. Don't have sex if you don't want to get pregnant. And they say, oh, what? Oh, that's horrible for you to say that. What about these women who get raped, okay? That is a very, very small percentage mm -hmm. of the women who are going in to get abortions. A very small percentage. And you know where my heart goes out to, to? To that dad who's standing outside the abortion clinic crying, begging this woman not to go have an abortion because his baby is inside her body, right? Is it her body? It's her body that's carrying that baby, but that is a separate life. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing too is women decide if a man gets to be a father or not if you think about it right even married women they decide husbands don't get veto rights over abortions so but if a woman wants child support then then she can well i'm gonna, I'm gonna decide that you're gonna have a baby and maybe get some child support from you so i'll tell you what i can get on the soapbox all day but you're right yeah. there is a choice if women don't yeah. want to get pregnant they know what not to do Wow, we are up against the break. I, I, I tell myself I've got to watch the clock because I enjoy this too much and look what's happened. We just, but anyhow, just to remind everyone, you are listening and viewing the Conservative Commandos. She is Melissa Isaac. I'm George Landreth. We're coming to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, the AON TV Network, and of course, Al Gore's Amazing Internet. That And of course, our own website, ccrshow.com. Don't go away. Melissa and I'll be right back. Attention homeowners. Do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. 
Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. We're glad you're with us. It, this is the place to be, as I always like to say. We, uh, of course, we're carrying the Conservative Commandos radio network, the AUN TV network, and of course, Al Gore's amazing internet. I'm George Landreth with Melissa Isaac. Um, hopefully you can tell the difference between us. <laughs> but uh, um, but anyhow, we are, uh, we're glad you're with us. We do want to remind you, if you want to check out a rebroadcast, just see our website, ccrshow.com. It's all there. Don't forget to follow us and like us on Twitter and Facebook, those kinds of things. we got to jump back into the conversation because we segment got to you know, cut us off and we've got to jump back in. The left is very good at taking a word that has, yeah. I think, power and truth in it because I do believe that choice matters. Um, but but then they misapply it. I think Black Lives Matter, but but the organization takes a true principle and then just twists it and distorts it and makes it something that is, and 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 they do that on purpose. Quite frankly, they do oh, that because if you asked Americans, do you support this agenda? They would say no. But when they apply yeah. a label to it that you can't really refute because it's self evidently a good you know, the label the words are good, then. Um, they hope to tamp down uh, the debate and the criticism about what they actually, what their real agenda is. Absolutely. It's frustrating, but well, um, you know, um, if we look at kind of what's happening in the world today, I think we can, uh, well, we can get frustrated because there's lots to be frustrated about. 
Steve Forbes has written and talked about this, and um, Joe Biden likes to brag. You know, he 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 says over and over again that he saved the American auto industry. Now, a fact checker can't possibly prove that's true. No, um, no. <laughs> that's there's zero evidence that he did that. Yeah. Um, and yet he keeps saying it. You know, and I, and yet nobody actually challenges him on that. At some point, somebody just say, "Sir." If you want to claim you did that, show me the evidence. What did you do specifically? Um, I, I think I know what his answer is going to be. And what that means is he gave the auto industry a lot of your money and my money. Yes. So He didn't give them well, his money. Oh, no, no. So, yeah. our, our, our but he's going to take credit for it. He did it. It's just he so dishonest. Money, gave it to the auto industry while the American people were left filing bankruptcy. And we're losing everything. And that's money we, we, we're, we're not going to see. But, you know, you look at the, just the NAFTA, right? Tr do you know, the, the NAFTA was, agreement was horrible. It was awful. And Trump renegotiated that, changed everything about that. But the thing that the American people don't understand, I think they're educated enough on what is NAFTA. What did it do specifically? Look at all the regulations that Trump has rolled back. I mean, I didn't realize until I really started researching how much regulation, the regulation was killing small businesses. Oh, yeah. It was killing um, small businesses specifically ability to, 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 to deal overseas and to work and have in contract overseas. So just what Trump has done, rolling back regulations for business owners, small business, medium sized business has been amazing. So people oh, yeah. want to just brand him somebody who's a friend of the big corporations. He's done a ton. He's done so much, but you know, people have to know that. They have to educate right. themselves on that. No, I think you're exactly right. I mean, uh, one of the things, and, and you may know this from just your, you know, your private practice as I've run from running a, a think tank. Um, if you're a Fortune 500 company, regulations aren't a big problem for you because you have a, an entire building full of bureaucrats and lawyers and accountants mm -hmm. who can just deal with it. And you just kind of say, you know, if, if they need two more employees to deal with the new set of regulations that just came out, fine, we'll hire two more. And that makes every car cost a nickel more, yeah. you know. But when you're a small business, you don't have that kind of option. So what it really means is you start having to figure out how you're going to kind of provide the services that you need to provide to make the income that you need to make or how you're going to spend time with your family and your children. But something's going to have to give. You're going to have to sleep less. You're going to have to spend less time with your family or you have to be less productive at work because you're now going to have to put more and more hours, not just minutes, but hours every week towards satisfying the paperwork demands of the government. Oh, and, yeah. And it, it, yeah, it, and it, it can it, kill you. It is. It's a lot. And then you have to look at it as a business owner, too, you know, uh, uh, just supplying medical insurance. Well, that, that was a fiasco going through which medical insurance policy. You know, we, we chose the second best policy that the state of Alabama has to offer. And it's actually better than some of the state policies that are offered. But this, these are expensive. This is very expensive. So you, people say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're a business owner. They assume just because you own your own business, you make a lot of money, having no clue the expense that comes along with that. So, right, right. so you're absolutely right. I mean, these the regulations and the red tape – it almost makes it not worth it. It yeah. truly does. I think that's why Steve Forbes warns of an economic disaster, his word, disaster, if Joe Biden wins. You know, if you, you know, usually they talk about in economics that when you have a hard fall in, in the market, there'll be also a, a, at some point a corresponding rebound. And part of the reason is it's kind of just a law of physics. You, know, you drop a Super Bowl rubber ball from the uh, rooftop, it's going to bounce up pretty high. You drop it only from a foot off the ground, it won't, it won't bounce up that high because it didn't fall that far. And so there's a little bit of that going on. So we should have seen a pretty robust, significant, at some point, rebound. Uh, after 2008, and yet it didn't. It was this pathetic kind of just limping along. And even though they created lots of new jobs, what they really did is we, we transferred, if you went to the cross tabs and the reports, we ended up with, instead of a lot of full-time jobs, we ended up with a lot of part-time jobs. And so a lot of Americans went from having one full-time job to having yeah. two part-time jobs. and yeah, with uh, and, no benefits. Yeah, with no benefits and lower pay. So now they're working yep. more hours to make the same amount of money while, while Biden and Obama were patting themselves on the back for creating all these new jobs. And it was like, well, yeah. not really. And uh, so I do think that it's a, um, it's a frustration that uh, 
the other side promises all the time they can fix things. And then when they don't fix things and someone else comes along, like like uh, President Trump, it's telling them that he's going to bring jobs back. What do they say? What magic wand do you have? And then, of course, right. once those new jobs now, now even we saw in Kamala Harris, she claims that the economic resurgence that we saw after Mr. Trump became President Trump. Yeah. She claims that that was them writing the coattails of all the great stuff that Obama did. If that were true, Obama would not have said, well, what magic wand does he have? He would have said, of course, he'll create lots of jobs. We've set the stage. Everything's going great. It's just going to continue on flying. He didn't say that. He said, yeah. what magic wand does he have? So I just, you know, I think it's pretty clear that these guys are... Um, they're trying to, what, what's the phrase, you know, blow smoke up our skirts. I'm not sure that came from because I'm not sure what advantage is gained by blowing smoke up someone's skirt. But maybe yeah. I'm missing some, uh, I don't know, some ritual in uh, in uh, dating. I don't know. But I, one I've never participated in. <laughs> I'm not sure what the smoke is about. But that's definitely what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. So it, it, it is interesting because she, she, you know, she said that tonight during the debate that basically they were handed a silver platter, that Obama handed Trump a silver platter. Yeah. Of course, they would be prosperous in these various areas. Um, but and then we're very critical of the economy, right, falling um, yeah. during the coronavirus, yet they were the same ones advocating to shut down everything. Yeah. And never mind the fact that— And they said they'll shut it down again. Economy, well, they want to shut it down again. But, you know, it, what's interesting is that you don't hear anything out of the, the Biden camp about the secondary effects of the shutdown or the unintended consequences of the shutdown, right? The yeah. suicide rates have gone up. Divorce rates have gone up. Um, hungry kids have gone up. I, so yeah. many kids, especially the poor kids, they eat at school. That's where they eat. Yeah. And so some kids, um, you know, that they may or may not have breakfast that morning and thank God for hot lunch at school. And then they go home and may or may not have, I mean, it's a very common thing. We have, some of these kids aren't even eating right now. They, they're saying, well, they can go to school at home. You look at the poor communities, they don't have internet. I can tell you here in, in Montgomery, in Alabama, their school buses, they're equipping with Wi-Fi and they're parking them in the poor neighborhoods just so these kids can get on the bus or get near the bus to get their school work done. So there's so much going on here that they're not even, they're, they're not looking into. They won't even yeah. acknowledge. Yeah, now that's a very good point. I um, it's frustrating to see that that's how they play the game, but it sadly is how they play the game. It's just it's kind of bizarre, but um, I th I think it'll be interesting to see what other stories they tell us because you know they tell us that they're gonna fix the economy, they're gonna fix you know they can control the weather. You know, President Obama could control the tides and the rising sea levels and stuff. Well, yeah, and if, what would they say if we elect Biden, there won't be any more hurricanes? Yeah. Because I know we got hit with one a couple of weeks ago here, and there's right. another one involved, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, because we didn't have hurricanes until Trump got elected. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, these right. people, uh, yeah, you, don't fact check them. It'll be very frustrating for if you do, because <laughs> they're just completely yeah. full of all kinds of stuff. I won't go into exactly what it is because this is a family show and I don't want to do that. But we are up against the clock and we got to take a break. But I do want to remind our viewers and our listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. She is Melissa Isaac. I'm George Landreth. We're your host today and we want to remind you that we will be right back. But uh, just remember this, ccrshow.com. That's our website. You can get all kinds of information there. It's the place to be. Don't go away. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis 
for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, a thousand bucks. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club for around a dollar a day. If any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free no-obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty for your entire home, backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now and get one month free plus $75 off your first year of coverage. One month free and $75 off your first year. The Home Service Club. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these dental visits vision coverage hearing coverage home delivery of drugs even gym memberships some plans may include no copays for many services and zero deductibles don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve call us right now the call is free the information is free and there's no obligation make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a medicare advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want call us right now Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show. We still technically call it the Conservative Commandos radio show, but if you're watching it on TV, you're probably asking yourself, why do you keep using that word? I do not think that word means what you think it means. I do understand the difference between radio and television, but we were a radio show first. So we just stuck with that. But at any rate, we're carried, of course, on the AUN TV network, the America Uncensored News Network, and, of course, on the Conservative Commandos radio network all across this great nation. And if you're not near one of those broadcast towers, never fear, because there is Al Gore's amazing internet. I'm George Landreth, and I do want to remind you, if you want to hear a rebroadcast of our show or more information, our website, ccrshow.com. I'm pleased to introduce our guest, Dan Gaynor. I'm not sure I should call him a guest, because... I like to have, if I, if I had my way, I'd have him on every day. But, you know, he doesn't actually work for me. And I think he'd say, George, come on, give me some space. You're stalking me. He'd get a, he'd get a restraining order, I'm sure. But at any rate, Dan is, uh, he's always insightful, always interesting. He's the vice president for business and culture for the Media Research Center. And he's also a veteran editor. So he knows what he's talking about because now he studies the media. He, uh, wa he's, he's a watchdog of the watchdog. But before he used to be in the media and he was a watchdog. But the difference was he was one of the good guys. He actually did his job. He de dealt with facts and information in a fair and reasonable fashion. Uh, you can, if you Google his name, you'll find him published in virtually every reputable paper and publication in the country. He's been on all kinds of television shows and radio shows. And we're just glad to have him here with us because he is always interesting and always insightful. And when you're done, you know more than you knew before you started the conversation. So with that, Dan, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. Well, thanks, but with that build up, I'm going to get up and walk away and just, uh, you know, because <laughs> nothing I can do live up to that. So, no, 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 you'll be able to live up to it easily. Easily. And, you know, and what's the, the Chinese expression, may you live in interesting times, and we certainly do. We do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pity. It's been kind of a slow news week once again. I mean, just like 2020 has been such a sleepy, quiet year. Yeah, what what we talk about? going on. You don't have the collapse of sports where NBA suddenly realizes that Guess what? People don't want to watch woke NBA to the point where I think they lost like 70% of their viewership. Uh, 
The NFL is fighting the COVID virus, which is cropping up everywhere and threatening the NFL season. Baseball is playing sleepy playoffs that no one's paying any attention to. Uh, Black Lives Matter is the, you know, the dominant force in all sports and not the dominant force among fans. Uh, and that's just, I mean, as appropriately, that's like the minor leagues. Yeah. Then you got the major leagues. In the major leagues, we live in Donald Trump's world. That's it. We, we, it's funny. I, I've always long, not always, but long referred to myself as an F plus celebrity. You know, okay, you're not even on the list if you, if you, you know, pe- people don't know who you are. But if you go on radio and TV a lot, you're like F minus F. But if you go, if you got regular appearances and write for Fox, okay, F plus. But to move even to the D list requires a lot of status. To move to the A list is now impossible because we have an A list that is dominated by one singular person. They're, they're, you know, when you look on the left or the right, the, the top movies, there used to be, you'd have signature stars who would dominate entertainment. You know, whether it was Hope and Crosby or Clark Gable or Charlton Heston, and you just go down the line. Even Will Smith, who I think is probably closest to A-list among, you know, Hollywood celebs right now. I can't remember the last time Will Smith had a, had a, a popular movie. And, and, you know, the, so the only movies that, that really break, broke through pre-COVID were the ensemble casts, you know, the Avengers movies and such, or the cartoons where there, no one's featured. So we have now moved into a, a unipolar world where it's Donald Trump and everything revolves around him like he's the sun. And, I mean, and the media hate him more than they've ever hated any other human being in history. I mean, I'm not talking about, oh, Dan's exaggerating. They don't hate him more than, yeah, they hate him more than Stalin. Actually, oh, yeah. they didn't really hate Stalin. They hate him more than Hitler. They, yeah. you know. One of the things that I've noticed is when people hate someone too much, it makes them stupid. And what I mean by that is, is um, I have friends, people I, admire and respect, you know, that um, have allowed themselves to be essentially overrun by a virus called the Trump derangement syndrome to the point now where they will say things that no intelligent, reasonable person could say. They'll parrot arguments that are on their face absurd and that, it, and that you know, if you were to switch it around and they were to, you know, they would laugh at you if you made such arguments. And so it kind of gives you a blind spot, kind of like, well, I don't have to think anymore because I hate this person so much. I can become a moron and it's okay. And I just, yeah, and it, they, it, I don't know, am I the only one? Maybe I'm overstating that, but I've just no, noticed. I don't think you're overstating it. Then they turn around and say, but they're the pro-science people and they, they believe in facts. <laughs> they don't believe in facts. Right. They believe in narrative. You right. Know, they, well, they, I mean, you, you, whether it's the Russia thing now, now what we know is it was all Hillary and Barack Obama. And the whole thing was known from day one. Barack Obama was in on it. This is so much bigger than Watergate. Watergate yeah, but was essentially a botched all, burglar yeah. operation where they wanted to get some facts. They wanted to look through the papers and see what are they trying to do. This was using the apparatus of government and the intelligence and the law enforcement agencies to basically try to undo an election. Yeah. That's something that Dr- Richard Nixon never even fantasized about. It's something that even in third world nations they, they seldom fantasize about. So, yeah. so the, you know, yes, they, they've complete. I mean... I, I watched, uh, I, I can't remember what it was, some doctor say something totally insane today. And it's like, he broke, Donald Trump broke the left. And in part, because the media set them up to fall. If you, I mean, go back to 2016. And they were told on the left that their time had come, that all of the planets had aligned the left was the dominant force in America. They were, the demographics had risen to the point where old white guys who looked like us were dying out and we were going to be replaced by people of color who voted for every left-wing stupid thing. Yeah, the and then Donald down. Trump arrived and proved them wrong and he even got, uh, at the time it wasn't a huge number, but he even got you know, a third more uh, African American voters, then you know Mitt Romney got. I mean, he went from six percent to eight percent. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about millions of voters, two percent matters a lot. 
Right. And he also did a lot better with the Latino crowd than people expected him to because their headline was always that he said that all, you know, all Hispanics were rapists and so forth, which, of course, he never yeah, said. Never but said. that was the right. narrative. And guess what? He did, he did pretty well in that dem demographic. So they obviously and now, and now, understood he didn't say that. that. We, we survived that situation where the polling was awful. And so now here we are. Polling recovered in 2018. Polling was pretty accurate in 2018, but Trump wasn't running. The polling says Trump's going to get, get his clock cleaned. I mean, it, it, it looks ugly. And then you look at the other information, and it doesn't seem consistent. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden goes and speaks someplace, and like two people in the audience. And I'm, I mean, genuinely, Jill Biden was speaking to, a, Jill, his wife, was speaking to a group of people out west, and there were nine people sitting in a circle. That was, a, that was the group. Donald Trump shows up, and there's 30,000, 40,000 people. Right. Uh, the energy is for Trump. Google, which Dr. Robert Epstein has warned would impact the election. Google came out just this week and admitted that more people are searching for Donald Trump than for Joe Biden on, on Google. Generally speaking, that seems to be an indicator that people are more interested in Trump than Biden. Now, and Biden is running an, an AWOL campaign. He's not around. He doesn't show up. He doesn't go to events. Trump got COVID, which I think we'll guess we'll probably get to in the next segment. Trump got COVID and did more media appearances than Joe Biden did without COVID. Right. And that's, I mean, so the, like I said, the world revolves around Trump and there is no group that has been made more insane about this than the major media. Interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. They really have gotten to the point where I often refer to them as lying sacks of rotting fecal matter because it's not just a matter of bias any longer. They just basically have flat out decided to run the other direction. But we are up against the clock and we've got to take a quick break. But I'm glad you can stick around because as you mentioned, there's I, we facetiously said it was a slow news week, but you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed. One of these days, maybe, but not anytime soon. Certainly not between now and Election Day, and I suspect not much after that either, quite frankly. But at any rate, we are the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth. He is Dan Gaynor, and he and I will be right back after these messages, so don't go away. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according 
to the secret war, a shocking new research report. I just read it. And folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get the secret war free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show, carried on the Conservative Commandos radio network all across this great nation and on the AUN TV network, the America Uncensored News Network. And of course, always on Al Gore's amazing internet for those who are not near one of the many broadcast hours. I'm George Landreth, and I'm one of your co-hosts today on the Conservative Commandos. He's Dan Gaynor. He is the Vice President for Business and Culture at the Media Research Center. We've been talking about the... Um, essentially just kind of how the media has been covering things. And, and Dan, you had teased a little bit right before the break. And by the way, for those who missed the first half, never fear, just go to our website, ccrshow.com. You can get a rebroadcast right there and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But to pick up that conversation, um, you'd mentioned the idea of, you know, when he got COVID, he was more active and, and, and made more appearances than a ostensibly healthy Joe Biden. And um, let's talk about the media covered all this because I was kind of surprised by the media's coverage and on some level, just the tweets that I saw out there, the vitriol. I'll be honest, I understand that there might be some like, you know, college age kid in, you know, in pajamas in his basement, you know, writing that he hates Donald Trump. But I saw people who were, you know, major position holders, spokespersons for Democratic people, campaigns, etc. In other words, people who ought to know better. And I was kind of surprised by the level of, you know, I mean, I think one thing I, t I remind my liberal friends is I'm going to vote for the guys that don't root for the coronavirus to kill people. Because if Barack Obama had gotten it, I would not have been calling for it to kill him. No, we would have done as the conservative movement did with Ruth Bader Ginsburg repeatedly and wish her the best of health and then um, pray for her on her passing. You know, I mean, it's, you know, look, and that's even Trump. Trump went and did this. Trump went and gave, you know, went and uh, honored her, you know, when she was lying in state and they booed him. <laughs> they booed him at the event. I mean, so they're, they're unhinged. And, and certainly, obviously, Trump caught the virus. And I can relate to Trump getting medical care for people who can't see. I, got, I just had surgery this last week. The virus was much on my mind because if I had gotten it, I wouldn't have been able to be eligible to get surgery. Very, very aware of it. I've had three family members get it. I was friends with Herman Cain. This is an important thing to me, not something to gloss over. But that said, Donald Trump made a determination that, uh, you know, as president of the United States, it's part of the risk you have to take. That you meet a lot of people, you go to a lot of events, you, you have, it's, it just goes to the program. It's interesting. Joe Biden made a statement saying that he's able to stay at home because some black woman is working in a warehouse someplace stocking shelves. Yeah, so well, how, so, does he, so, how does he know what her race is? Or is well, he suggesting but, that, uh, that low wage, low skill jobs are uh, the domain of black women? Yeah, but to, to wow. come out and say that and to not acknowledge that maybe, you know, you know look, she's taking, she's taking risks. I expect, I expect her to take risks and me not to take risks. And that's basically what it sounded like. Yeah. Donald Trump expects that he had to take risks as well. Right. And it unfortunately caught up with him. Um, we as a nation have never blamed victims of crime or victims of violence or victims of bad health. In fact, we always sort of say, you, you don't blame the rape victim for what she was wearing. Right. You know, you know, but apparently we blame the virus victim for what he's wearing, even though the medical community has been all over the map on the, their guidance on all this, They're, it's corrupt, it's wrong, it's influenced by China, it's, you know, it's all, it's just crazy. Oh, yeah. um, so, so you look, the media, entertainment media went off the charts and saying rooting for Trump to die. Chris Rock, who ordinarily a comedian I like, and I don't want to get into cancel culture and not trying to say end his career, but he went on Saturday Night Live rooting for COVID. And, you know, if, 
Dennis Miller, who used to be in Saturday Night Live, uh, who's a conservative comedian, if during the Obama presidency, Obama had gotten a virus that might kill him, if Dennis Miller had rooted for that virus, his career would have been over. No place would have booked him. He wouldn't have been allowed on TV. I, I mean, everybody would have just been hands off. Sorry, you said something wrong. Right. So we don't have cancel culture for the left now. We only have cancel culture for anyone who goes up against the left. You know, J.K. Rowling, you know, you say something critical of, of transgenders, even though you've been the most left-wing author globally popular ever. Oh, well, well they're going to try to cancel you. Yeah. But she's, and that's the funny thing is she's not a, a conservative. Right. Yeah. I mean, what she said about transgender stuff was perhaps a little more friendly to the way many conservatives feel on some issues. But the reality is if you check out her politics, check the boxes, she is not a conservative. She's not a Republican. She's not part yeah, she, of the, you know, she's not part she of the Tory said party. She said 10 years ago, they would have hailed it as forward thinking, but they've moved so far to the left that yeah, yeah. she got destroyed. So Trump gets this virus and the media freak out about it. They freak out about him getting, there they were three likely scenarios and they were okay with two of them. And they got the third. The first was the most likely, you know, and they were the most desired on their part, which was they wanted Trump to get really sick or die. That's what the press wanted. That's what the left wanted. That's what the major entertainment media wanted. They would have been satisfied with the second, which is Trump gets really sick, can't campaign. A little little pain is good for the soul. They would have been satisfied with that. Okay, you know, he could force him out of the office. Instead, they got scenario three which is Donald Trump didn't get it all that bad. It doesn't look so far that any of the people in his orbit got it all that bad. Uh, and he's now out saying the very thing they didn't want him to say, which is, hey, I had it. Wasn't that bad? We can't shut down the entire United States for this virus. Yeah. How dare he and, say that? And so Twitter, result, Twitter wants to silence him because that cannot be said. How dare you? <laughs> and I mean, Maggie Haberman from the New York Times coming out and saying, calling for the end of Walter Reed Hospital. Saying yeah. everybody should have been shipped out to other places and shut it shut down. Why? Because they cured the president of the United States. That's their job. Last time I checked, he's the commander in chief. Yeah. The truth is, if a war criminal were brought to a doctor, the doctor's duty is to treat the war criminal. It's not to say, I don't approve of this person's life choices or decisions. I think on balance they're a bad person, so I'm not. You know, even if it was uh, somebody who raped, you know, a hundred people, and they come in with cancer, guess what? You treat them for cancer. But see, the left would be okay with that. They're just yeah. not okay with Donald Trump. Right. That's so, what's amazing to me. I mean, that's that's what I mean by they've, they, it makes it makes otherwise intelligent people stupid as hell. Well, it's not just stupid. It's really hateful and vicious. Yeah. I mean, they 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 hate they hate everybody who voted for Trump. Everybody supports him. Anybody who might help him in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, so to be Trump comes out. Comes out. He's you know seemingly healthy. They can't bear it. They they want to they they're in a national freak out um, about it. And we're less than a month out of the election, and they want to they want to blame him for for everything. Here's things that they don't want to talk about. They don't want to talk about back in March how Nancy Pelosi urged people to come on down to Chinatown after Donald Trump had tried to you know had closed closed our travel with China. They don't want to talk about how you know he was called by the media and by Biden and others as some sort of xenophobe. They want to talk. They, they'll do contact tracing for Trump and not do contact tracing for CNN's town hall that they held in March, where they encouraged people to attend. They want to talk about how the World Health Organization is the gold standard for information when we know that they're in the pocket of the communist Chinese. And then, and this is great because it's from the New York Times. The New York Times has a story saying, you know, when the World Health Organization told us that we should keep borders open, during the pandemic. It wasn't founded in either science or medicine. It was just part of their agenda. And so that comes out and everybody says, but we should still need to take the word of the World Health Organization. Yeah, because they represent insane. science. We're told, the media tell us we must wear masks. But while N95 masks seem to be the gold standard for masks, um, a lot of what we're all wearing aren't N95 masks. And according to different studies and analysis, they have varying levels of protection and safety, both for the wearer and for who you might share the virus with. But we're not supposed to talk about that either. We're not supposed to talk about the massive list of problems that we're causing people by locking them down, suicide and spousal abuse and unemployment and lost businesses. We're not supposed to talk about any of that. We're not gonna talk yeah. about why Americans got the virus 
more than other countries, even though 80% of Americans are either fat or obese. And by the way, in that group, so I'm not bashing people, I'm, over, I'm definitely overweight. I'm not as overweight as I was. I'm, thanks, thanks to COVID, I've lost a lot of weight walking around. But you know, the media pick and choose how we cover a scientific medical thing when they're not scientists or medical people. Right. We get a thousand doctors come out and sign a letter saying, oh yeah, well, we, but we think social distancing and masks and all this stuff is important. And less, of course, you want to protest for Black Lives Matter. In which case, go right ahead because that's more important. Right, yeah. You have a speech at the White House, they'll go crazy. But if you're burning things down across the street, we're good with that. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, that's for a good cause. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes it kind of absurd. And I, I think the press is at an all-time low for trust because of this. Because people, you know, you don't have to... I know that you have all the numbers and you can sit there and tell us exactly the examples. And uh, and we can't necessarily do that. But we do live in the environment, can watch them and, and kind of get a general sense of... And I think when you explain this, and part of it's because I think you guys have done a good job of explaining this, people kind of now, there's a reason why the press isn't trusted. And it's not because uh, you fooled people into believing they're not trustworthy. It's because you presented people with the facts and they've kind of gone, oh my gosh. Every day, they see the agenda they've got against Trump. They see the, how they push for lockdowns. They see how hypocritical they are criticizing people attending something at the White House and not doing contact tracing for your typical Black Lives Matter protest or riot. They are, there is no bigger group of hypocrites in America than journalists. There you go. Well, our time's about up, but I, Dan, I wanted to ask you to tell our listeners how they can follow your work, the Media Research Center's work, and uh, be up on you know what's going on. If they want to kind of be able to, if you will, fact check the media and check and see the bias that's going on. Bias is probably the wrong word. Uh, it's stronger than that now. <laughs> but but at any rate, um, how do we follow your work? Oh, well, they, first of all, they should go to newsbusters.org. That's our organization's blog, um, or mrc.org if they want to support us. Uh, they can either do so by signing up for our newsletters and share them or you know we are a nonprofit and so it does count on your taxes it's the end of year when people start thinking about that uh, for myself they can follow me on Twitter at Dan Gaynor I haven't been tweeting quite as much lately I'm doing a lot of voice to text but the the arm is a, is imperfect I'm doing it on a wing and a prayer here one wing not two <laughs> um, and I regularly write for Fox and it's just been a little bit inhibited this year because of this but I'm, as I recover I'll be writing back writing more heading in heading into the the final weeks and God save our Republic because he might be the only one who can. Yeah. There's a lot on the line here. It really is. It's uh, just to me stunning to think that we could take a, a turn towards uh, socialism in this one election. It's I'm not sure if it's a turn. I think it's a, a cliff. It's yeah. cliff testing. You just uh, step That's off. Right. And there you just are. drop off and there you yeah, Exactly. Good point. Well, we are up against the clock. So I just want to remind our listeners, this is the conservative commandos. I'm George Landreth. He's Dan Gaynor, and I will be back right after these messages, so don't go away. There's more of the Conservative Commandos, but remember our website, ccrshow.com. You can get rebroadcasts, more information. It's all there. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. When I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. I'm oh, so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. 
That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show carried on the AUN TV network. The AUN TV network, of course, stands for the American Uncensored News TV network, and of course, carried on the Conservative Commandos radio network, and of course, Al Gore's amazing internet. We truly are everywhere. I'm George Landreth. I'm one of your co-hosts today, and she is Christine Hicks. Just so you... She's been on the show many times, so perhaps I don't need to introduce her, but I will anyhow. She's a common sense, constitutional conservative. She's from a deep blue state. She loves her country. She appreciates its history, and she believes in freedom as a governing philosophy. And, uh, you know, like I said, she knows what it's like to be outnumbered. So I think a lot of times her input on things uh, gives some interesting insights to what's actually happening. So with that, Christine, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. Hi, good to be here. So this has uh, been another one of those proverbial slow business weeks, you know, slow news weeks, I mean, you know, hardly anything has happened. Let's see, there was uh, a last week a presidential debate. There was the president being diagnosed with COVID, him going to Walter Reed, spending time there, uh, being released, you know, etc. So, you know, I, I don't know what we'll talk about, but <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. how do these things, That's that's kind of like a, if I were to write a novel and I were writing about a, a presidential race and say all these things happened a month before the election, most people would roll their eyes and say, no way could real life be that wild, that unpredictable. Guess what? Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. So let's let's talk about what impact it has on the election because it's we're, we're basically a month out now, a little less than a month out. So what does all this mean? Well... I'm hoping it's a positive thing. I mean, he said today that he thinks it was a gift from God that he got this. And the one thing I'm glad about, um, I'm not glad he got it, but I'm glad that he is talking about the treatment that he had. And I'm hoping that, you know, this is something that people in general can use um, towards, you know, as he puts it, a cure. Um, so in that sense, it's good. But, it, you know, it's it's pretty shocking, to say the least. I mean, it's to, it, it totally goes with this whole year. You know, it's like the Twilight Zone. I mean, I, just, I thought it was a joke when I read that. That didn't it, The day I read, the other day when I read that he had that, I thought it was like satire or something, like bad yeah. satire. <laughs> yeah, from the Babylon Bee or something. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. No, I, yeah. When I first heard it, I thought to myself, that can't be. But anyhow, um, I think you make a good point, though, that... Um, Rather than telling people, don't be afraid, and I think his instinct to try to calm America is a good instinct. But my experience tells me when someone is freaking out or upset, it doesn't usually work to say, don't be upset. Um, if you want to help them not be upset, though, you can actually help them. And I think when he talks about the treatment he got, when he talks about um, some of the new treatments, you know, new skills things we now have that we can battle this with that we didn't have six months ago. We didn't even have six weeks ago in some cases. I think that can give Americans a lot more confidence. And I think that's a good thing for them to have because, um, you know, I, I think being afraid of this virus unduly is unnecessary. The left would love us all to be hiding in the basement like Joe Biden's been doing. They think that will help them get power. Uh, they think the economic collapse it will cause will help them get power. And they're happy, you know, to 
see many Americans lose their businesses, their homes, their financial security, have their children's future, financial futures uh, compromised. That's okay, as long as they win the next election and have power. And uh, I think that's very sad that that's their approach, but it clearly is. And uh, I think as Trump does and talks about these issues, I think that he is going to be able to make that case. Because I can't imagine that... Um, that most sane people can look at Joe Biden and say, that's the America I, we need. Yeah, I don't think so either. So I think him having it, you know, on the one hand, I know when, when I heard that the president had it, I thought to myself, wow, you know, this is, I mean, if the president can get it, this is something anyone can get, you know. But like I said, him having it at least gives us an example of the treatments that are available, um, which, you know, I, I've seen already the negative responses from some medical professionals and stuff that are like criticizing the treatment that he's gotten but he's better already and he's what is he 74 years old you know yeah. so it's kind of a miracle that it's only lasted what a few days and he, you know today he was talking and he looks pretty good he seems yeah. fine so whatever they gave him seems to work so i think in that aspect it, it gives you hope you know that this isn't as bad as you know some people make it out to be. Right. I think sometimes t giving people numbers, like, you know, 99% of the people can overcome this, and even in the older demographics, it's still like 97% or something like that, um, is not as helpful as a real-life example. It's the reason why when people like Ronald Reagan would tell stories, they would often give you a story that illustrated the point that they were making. Mm -hmm. Because stories are more powerful to us than numbers are. If I tell you, you know, nine out of ten people survive, that doesn't, you know, it's like, oh, what? But when you know somebody and you've seen them and you realize they were at high risk given their age, their weight, and other factors, mm -hmm. you say to yourself, and they made it through. And uh, I don't know, may maybe six months ago he wouldn't have made it through. But we now have things, uh, in, you know, they say he has antibody levels in his, which suggests yeah. that he's now immune his body is fighting this virus and apparently has won the battle. And so now he has these antibodies. Um, you know, and I, to me, uh, that's what's going to take to really open the economy again. People are not going to want to go to the movies. They're not going to want to go to restaurants until they feel uh, telling them that there's a 97% chance they're going to be okay probably isn't going to work because it hasn't worked so far. I mean, this, that, that hasn't changed. That was true in July. And yet sure. people are still kind of freaked out about it. I'm not yeah, saying I, we should be. I'm just saying you got to deal with what you got. And that is people right. are freaked out. It's, you know, it's certainly something that, you know, no one should take lightly. It's a serious right. thing. And no, it, people should try not to get, not just because, you know, you don't want to get sick, but you don't want the hassle that goes along with it. Um, yeah. Possibly very expensive medical bills or, you know, spreading it to everyone. You could have, you know, elderly parents or whatever. That you don't want to get that. Right. Um, but I think, you know, him talking about the treatment that he got, being readily available for the general population is a good thing, especially now because people aren't too uh, quick to just go take some vaccine that really hasn't been vetted thoroughly, you know. Right. So I don't think that that's necessarily a good option. So to, to put an actual treatment option out there is really good, I think. So, you know, if it took him getting that to give us that option, then that is a good thing. You know, right. And so you uh, my, my, I think there's a couple of questions would be is d does it make him a little more sympathetic? Because now when he tells you we're going to get through this together, we can make it. Don't get too worried. We're, this is America and we will solve this problem. We need to just stick together and we'll get through it. Does it make it more compelling? And is it make him a little more sympathetic? Um, and then on the sympathy, the sympathy question, I have to be honest, I was shocked by the number of people that I saw tweeting things like, I hope he dies. Uh, you know, and it, these weren't just like yahoos in the basement, you know, that were college kids where they just decided to write that. These were people that were former spokespersons and former, you know, um, yeah. you know, they, they were people that should have known better is my point. And, you you know, and they were saying that kind of garbage. Right. I mean, I didn't even look at that stuff. Like I just what I was surprised about was actually I mean, I, I looked at the, you know, liberals that were. I mean, Rachel Maddow, I think, said, God bless Tre President Trump. I mean, I was looking at people like that that actually did show sympathy for once in their life for him. So that was, yeah, I mean, Michael Moore, I don't know if you heard about this, when Michael Moore said he thought he was <laughs> doing it on purpose, like to, to, to rise in the polls or something. Like, why in the world would that make him? <laughs> so he thought, some people thought he was doing it 
you know, on purpose, like lying and saying he had it for the sympathy or whatever, which yeah. of course is insane. Um, but, you know, I was surprised by the supportive messages, especially from liberals, um, as far as the really negative. I just, I'm not even going to bother looking at it. Yeah, no, it is pretty hateful stuff when you're saying you wish someone would die. Um, yeah. It's one of the reasons why, um, you know, I didn't get within 10,000 miles of that when it came to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because... I didn't agree with any of her decisions, really, uh, hardly ever. I can't think of one I did, at least certainly not a controversial one. Maybe there was a procedural one that was 9-0, and I might have agreed with her on that one. But, but bottom line is, as a human, why would you ever wish death and suffering on right. You right. Know, other humans unless, they're, unless their name is like Adolf Hitler yeah. or something? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, really? Come on. And um, so on some level, it is frustrating to see that kind of behavior. Um, we are uh, we're almost up to the break, so I just want to perhaps just ask throw out one quick thing that we can discuss very briefly. I'll let you kind of say your piece, and then I'll just take us on out to the break because we'll have to come back after the break after that. But but in terms of you know one of the things the pollsters tell us is that he is uh, lagging behind where he ought to be performing well or better with, with what you know kind of suburban women. Do you think that? Um, there are things he can do in the next 30 days that will win some of them back so that it helps him in the polls or on election day? Or is that a gone constituency? Just, just forget it. I don't know if there's anything, you know, specifically that he can do uh, to make women like him more because it definitely does seem like he has more female um, people that dislike him for whatever reason. Um, but I think in general, just, you know, showing some humanity, which he is now about the COVID thing, um, you know, saying he wants these type of treatments to be readily available to everyone. I mean, that, you know, that, that talks Jeez. to the average person. Um, and also, um, you know, hopefully they can come to some conclusion before the election with the stimulus, um, you know, to help businesses. And I mean, that I think is going to be a game changer. And, that you know, that's a big deal, too. So, but yeah, as far they've as... They've got to believe that, that they can get past this. Yeah. You have so. yeah, makes a lot of sense. Well, we're yes. up against the break, and the clock sometimes is a cruel taskmaster, but I am glad you're sticking around because we've got lots more to discuss. And uh, just okay. remind uh, everyone, this is the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth. She is Christine Hicks. And we are coming to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, the AUN TV Network, and, of course, Al Gore's Amazing Internet. Remember our website, ccrshow.com. Don't go away. Christine and I will be right back. Attention homeowners. Do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 
Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind and financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents and they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp, call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show carried on the Conservative Commandos radio network, the AUN TV network. Of course, AUN TV stands for American Uncensored News. And uh, of course, Conservative Commandos, you know, been around for a long time, but I'm George Landreth, one of the Conservative Commandos hosts, and she is Christine Hicks. She's become a regular on the show because, quite frankly, she always has interesting things to say, makes interesting observations. And uh, Christine, I'd like to throw you a little bit of a curveball. And by the way, to our listeners and our viewers, if you missed the first half of this interview and want to pick it up, go to our website, ccrshow.com. You can get a rebroadcast there and uh, you'll be good to go. But uh, Christine, I want to throw out a couple names, just play a, you know, if you will, I'll be the, I'll, I'll pitch a couple names to you, see if you want to hit them or let them go right on by like uh, it was a bad pitch. Um, and that will be, why don't I take uh, uh, Derek Chauvin and Eddie Van Halen. They're not related in any way, shape, or form, so I'm not suggesting that. Just two names that were in the news this week, and that's what makes them, you know, why they got mentioned. Yeah, Derek Chauvin, well, I'm surprised he's out on bond. Um, I'm not sure where he'll be able to go to safely. Yeah, just for our viewers and listeners, this is the policeman that was kneeling on the neck of George Floyd, right? And he's been in prison, but he got released, just in case they didn't recognize the name. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen with that? I mean, I, like I said, I don't know where he's going to go, where he'll be safe. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a sad situation all the way around, you know. Yeah. I personally don't think that he murdered George Floyd on purpose. I think he just, um, I don't know what he was thinking, really, to, yeah. to stay on him for the length of time that he did. But, you know, I also put it on the department for allowing that move to begin with. Yeah. Um, and they were aware of his <laughs> problems, his behavioral type of issues that he had had in the past. So, you know, yeah. and I the, think those and the things police <laughs> union basically protected him and kept him in place when he sh clearly shouldn't have been there. Yeah. I mean, I feel about the other offices there. I mean, a couple of them were only there. What were they there? Like a week or something. They had yeah. just literally just started. Right. I mean, they were listening to him, you know, so I don't really... I think it's more on him than it is on them um, yeah. because he was in charge. I mean, what were they supposed to do? Tell him, tell him to stop. I wish they would have, but yeah. they didn't. So, but like I said, I don't think it was, I, I can't see first degree murder. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, also, if you listen to the tapes and things, it doesn't appear that he had racial motives, which oh. of course what we're told was he was clearly a racist. I'm not defending the officer in this instance, because I've I've written on this. I'm highly troubled by what I saw. Um, he clearly, in my view, uh, you know, was way out of line. 
You know, I mean, it was just that was not a, not cool at all in any way, shape, or form. No defense of what he did. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, let's look at what he did and why he did it. And the evidence to me suggests that this is a hothead, who who you know who he escalated difficult situations and rarely de-escalated them. And part of being a good policeman is learning how to de-escalate if you can. And um, it didn't seem that was a skill set he had. It seemed that the police system, you know, the you know the they knew that, and yet they didn't relieve him of his, op of his responsibilities. And sure. so what happened to George Floyd is tragic, and that can be true. I believe it is true. That doesn't necessarily mean that the officer was a racist. I'd like to see evidence. If that's the case, let's see the evidence. And then the other thing I mean, it doesn't mean is that, you know, that he was trying to kill him. I think uh, he was certainly not very careful about George Floyd's life. So I'm not saying that he didn't commit a crime. But like you said, I don't know that he was trying to kill him. That's what yeah. first-degree murder would be, trying to kill him. I mean, you know, when you look at it without knowing all of the details, it, it looked, you know, you could say, oh, he just, you know, killed him on purpose. But I really don't think he was trying to kill him. I don't even think he realized what he was doing, how dangerous it was. But as far as race, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind if it, if it was a white guy that was, you know, six foot four, 200 or whatever, George, he was a big guy, you know, and he was clearly on something and, and in distress. Um, and I think he thought he was doing the right thing by holding him down. The problem is having him on his belly like that um, wasn't a good idea. And that yeah. ended up, But there's also the question of, you know, what whatever he was on, what was in the system, did that contribute to what happened as well? So I don't think it's going to be as clear cut as everyone thinks when it actually does get into a courtroom, you know? Yeah, no, you're right, because all the other facts will come out. And... Uh you know, it's I, it's not the fact that George Floyd had committed crime and lots of crime isn't really relevant because if you're, you know, but on one sense it is. If the police knew that when they arrested him, they might know of his violent propensity and therefore they might be more quickly apt to try to defend themselves if the guy is violent. But that's not, you know, at some point after eight and a half to nine minutes, you kind of go, whoa, 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 that's just too much. You can't do that. So that's the interesting thing is I, I don't think there's any question that this police officer uh, committed a crime. The question is which crime? And it's not clear to me that he's either a racist or a murderer uh, of the first degree. He might be guilty of other serious crimes for which he might do serious jail time. But murder, I'm not sure. But it'll be interesting to see. We'll get a lot more facts in the future and then we'll know for sure. But but it is, it's an interesting case. But like you said, where, if you're him, where do you go? <laughs> where you won't be, you know, attacked and killed before trial kind of thing. And I think that'd be unfortunate, you know, in the same way that I think it was not right that George Floyd didn't get to stand trial. You know, yeah. we ought to stand trial. We ought not be killed either by policemen who are not very good at what they do and don't know how to solve these problems without killing you or a mad mob. Either way, not a good thing. But, uh, well, the second name I threw out was uh, Eddie Van Halen. Now, obviously, he's not been accused of any crimes. But just in case our our viewers and listeners are not fans of classic rock and roll, or they kind of what? Fill no, it in. I think, I think anyone will know who Eddie Van Halen was. I now. hope so, but you know, you never know. But yeah, yeah, yeah the Van Halen, great rock band. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, of classic rock, including Van Halen. I was in high school when I first started hearing their music, and uh, it was awesome. Um, Eddie Van Halen is definitely one of my favorite guitarist i mean everyone knows who he was it was i was shocked it's it's just really sad you know yeah. but he definitely yeah. left left quite a legacy yeah um certainly a very skilled musician no question about that a very very skilled musician but uh he also just seemed to be a happy guy i mean some people are kind of like uh, angry ornery people and my impression of him was he really enjoyed music and you could tell it when he played yeah. yeah, it was kind and of like. like was, I never saw him not smiling, always smiling. You know, he seemed like right. a happy. Seemed Makes like sense. a nice. Absolutely, life is tenuous. You can be here one day and not the next, and uh, it may sound trite, but to me, that's one of the reasons it's important with our friends and our family to always cherish the time we have with them. Because nobody ever says when they lose a loved one, um, you know, oh, I wish I'd spent more time getting overtime at the office. They yeah. always say, I wish I'd spent more time with those I love. Well, our time is about up, but I wanted to, uh, just before we kind of conclude, uh, if I can sh shift back to maybe the political. And that would just be this. 
if you look at this election cycle and you were talking to your friends and neighbors, what would you tell them on the line about this election? Because sometimes people think of it as kind of like, you know, like they're a fan. So it's like, oh, my team, rah, rah. But to me, this is much more important than that. This isn't about my team or your team. This is about America. What would you tell them? I would tell them it's the difference between keeping America or just, you know, becoming a communist nation. You know, that's the difference. Um, you know, because the people, the Democrats, what they're turning into is not the Democrats of yesterday. You know, they're turning into, it's just communism. Plenty of people don't want that. So let's yeah. hope, we, you know, make the right choice. Right. Well, one thing's for sure. You can vote yourself into socialism and communism, but you never vote yourself out of it. You have to fight your way out of it. So I, I'm hoping that we don't make that choice because it, it would be a sad choice to have made. I think freedom's worth defending, and hopefully our voters will go and defend the Constitution, defend our great history of limited government. But uh, I, I like the way you phrase that. But we are up against the break. I just don't want to remind um, our viewers, our listeners, they can follow you on Instagram at Christine M. Hicks, H-I-X-X, -X, or on Facebook, which is where most of your political stuff is, at Christine Hicks, again, H-I-X-X. -X. So um, thanks, Christine, for joining us today and spending some time sharing your insights on, on what's happening in the world. I'm glad that there are people out there in blue states like you, and uh, we just need to, we need to clone you or something, so there's a lot more of you. <laughs> it's not easy, but we're here. We're out there. <laughs> Absolutely. To our viewers and listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. Don't go away. We will be right back after these messages. But uh, just remember, our website, ccrshow.com. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, a thousand bucks. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club for around a dollar a day. If any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free no-obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty for your entire home, backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now and get one month free plus $75 off your first year of coverage. One month free and $75 off your first year. The Home Service Club. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these dental visits, vision coverage, hearing coverage, home delivery of drugs, even gym memberships. Some plans may include no copays for many services and zero deductibles. Don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve. Call us right now. The call is free, the information is free, and there's no obligation. Make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want. Call us right now. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. 
Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. We have had a great time with you today. Melissa Isaac, my co-host. Melissa, I should ask you, how can people follow you? Because you're obviously on all the time here, but the reality is you're not here 24-7. So if people want to know what's going on with Melissa without endangering getting a restraining order on them, uh, how do they do that? (laughs) So I'm easy to find on social media. I'm just Melissa Isaac on Facebook. That's Isaac with a K. And I'm Melissa.Isaac on Instagram. And you can follow my business page at Isaac Law Firm. Pretty easy to find. That sounds good. That's awesome. Mine's actually also relatively easy to find. Frontiers of Freedom is ff.org. And uh, on Twitter, you can find me at um, G Landreth, G L A N D R I T H, which unfortunately spl- spells Glandreth. And if I'd thought that through, <laughs> I might not have done it because Gland, I don't know. But anyhow, it's what it is. And uh, but you can follow me there as well. Um, great, great conversation today, and as usual, some great guests as well. But our time is up, so I just want to thank you for joining me and being a co host with me because it's lots of fun. And I really enjoy the fact that you've got that 2020 vision, even through the fog. I like yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> but our time is up, we've got to run, we've got to go. But to all of our viewers and listeners, we'll see you tomorrow on TV and on radio. Well, we'll hear you on radio. You'll hear us. And uh, with that, God bless.